In the anime series Chainsaw Man, based on the original manga, a young man named Denji steps into an underworld of hunting devils and supernatural evil with a team of fellow hunters. The first season, produced by MAPPA Studios in Japan, is a high-level achievement in action and dramatic animation. In this video, we'll look at how the third episode creates cinematic shots to visualize the story. Per usual, there will be spoilers to the story of Chainsaw Man, so I recommend checking out the series before proceeding further. As a general story overview, the first 12 episodes of the series reveal the origin story of Denji and his pet devil, Pochita, as Denji discovers a new life hunting devils under the mysterious Makima. Denji is assigned to the stoic Aki while being paired with a wild fiend power. The team falls in and out of various misadventures as more of the truth behind their operation is unveiled. So when looking at how to make cinematic shots, one place to start is analyzing the composition and figuring out the horizon line, as well as what elements are in the foreground, midground, and background. Lens choice can also be part of the equation. In cinematic shot number one, we see a wide lens being used to show power and Denji in an expansive space bordered by vending machines. The primary light sources are the artificial light coming from the vending machines, creating a strong contrast between the murky room interior and the machines. Perspective lines formed by the rows inside the machines help to guide our eyes to where power is in the foreground and Denji is staged more in the background. The camera is slightly tilted upward to show some of the ceiling, and there is a thin strip of window light behind Denji to frame his head. In cinematic shot number two, power is shown in a medium shot with the camera above her tilted downward toward her. The perspective lines formed by the cans behind her inside the vending machine help to create the three-point perspective grid. Power is mostly backlit by the artificial light inside the vending machine, so there is some fill light bouncing upward from her surroundings to light her somber expression. The camera lens could be close to the naked eye, so it might be around 50 millimeters or a little longer than this metric. In cinematic shot number three, the camera is placed high above the characters, tilted downward, with a wider lens to create a down shot. We see the perspective lines formed by the vending machines, creating the three-point perspective grid. Power and Denji are staged at opposite ends of the frame, possibly implying some of the emotional and relational distance between them at this point in the story. Most of the lighting in the scene still is from the artificial light in the vending machines, helping to create a slightly surreal feel inside the space. In cinematic shot number four, we see Denji and Power in an office space, with both of them close to the center of the frame. The camera has a wide lens and is around their eye level. We see the window with Venetian blinds behind Denji and Power, forming a framing rectangle around them. Perspective lines informed by the furniture and wall posters help us to get a sense of spatial depth in this room. The background is slightly out of focus, drawing our eyes toward Denji and Power, who are in focus. In cinematic shot number five, we see Denji and Power riding public transportation, and they're once again on the opposite sides of the frame, showing the emotional distance between them. The composition is flatter than previous shots as we don't see as many spatial depth cues. But the grid pattern formed by the windows behind Denji and Power help us to organize the space in the frame. If a longer lens was used in this shot, typically it would have to be staged quite far back in spatial depth to create this composition. A wider lens might show more curvature in the perspective lines around the edges of the frame. Primary lighting in the scene is coming from the outdoor sunlight, pouring in through the windows from the top, keeping power and Denji in some shadows. In cinematic shot number six, we see power in the foreground, blurred out of focus while Denji is in focus in the midground. The camera is placed close to the level of power's arm in the foreground, tilted upward, showing the ceiling. A longer lens could be used here as we see the spatial distance between the windows appear to be compressed. Denji is positioned more in a profile shot, and the perspective lines from the ceiling and window panes help to direct our eyes toward him. In cinematic shot number seven, we see a wider lens used with the camera higher above the characters looking down toward Denji and power. The perspective lines start to curve at the edges of the frame, reflecting the use of a wider angle lens. The perspective lines from the bars in the foreground and the window panes in the background set up the three-point perspective. The handle loops hanging from the top of the frame act as foreground elements that are slightly out of focus, creating a sense of spatial depth. In cinematic shot number eight, the camera is high above the ground outside the window pointed downward to create a down shot through the window pane. A longer camera lens is likely being used to restrict our view of the surroundings and just focusing our view on Makima in one window pane area and the other characters in another pane area. The grid pattern of the window helps to section off areas of the space, showing a distance between Makima and the other characters. There's also a band of light spreading across the floor that separates Makima from the others, and the window pane is out of focus in the foreground to help create a sense of spatial depth. In cinematic shot number 9, power is in the foreground, brightly lit by the outdoor light pouring through a hole in the ceiling. 
The camera is slightly above her head, tilted downward to also show Denji laying on the ground in the background. The perspective lines of the wooden floor help us to see the ground plane and how far it stretches into the back. The bright light on power also sets up a contrast between her and the darker background, enhancing the spatial depth between them. In cinematic shot number 10, we see another camera angle within the same scene where the camera is now behind Denji, who is in the foreground out of focus. Power is in focus and we see her full body bathed in outdoor light pouring through the ceiling. The interior surroundings are largely dark, so once again power really stands out in the frame due to her bright lighting. The perspective lines inside the interior also direct our eyes toward power, and a longer lens might be used here. In cinematic shot number 11, the camera is now lower to the ground behind Denji, who is out of focus. Power remains the focus of the shot in the mid-ground, and the bright lighting on her continues to separate her from the darker background. The contrast creates a sense of mystery and an ethereal quality around her. The window pane in the background helps to create a frame around Denji's head, while the background forms a rectangular frame around power. In cinematic shot number 12, the camera is traveling through space, flying high above the ground as Denji and the Bat Devil fight. The Bat Devil with a severed limb is out of focus in the foreground, while Denji appears in the midground in focus. The city below and the background mountains help us to see the ground plane and convey how far high above the ground these characters are. In cinematic shot number 13, Denji lays on the ground in the foreground with his attention directed toward an innocent woman in the background. Debris and dust clouds form framing elements around both characters conveying the sense of chaos caused by the fight, but also helping us to direct our eyes on where to focus. At this story beat, the most important information is Denji telling the woman to flee the scene. In cinematic shot number 14, we see a shot with extreme perspective as Denji preps to attack the Bat Devil. Denji's arms and chainsaw blade are stretching toward the camera lens and are distorted in proportion, possibly indicating a wider camera lens being used. Denji is placed in the lower right corner of the frame to give it enough room to stage the extreme perspective of his arms and the chainsaw blade. This extreme perspective creates a heightened sense of dynamic action and urgency that creates tone and atmosphere for the fight. So overall, these technical descriptions of each shot helps to break down the elements of what makes them cinematic. The language of film as shown in composition, lens choice, and camera movement are well executed in this episode to heighten the drama and action.